We're here for our live interview, our most blessed of interviews I think we've done so far. The Pride Denton Committee! Ow, ow! Woo! What's up? Woo! 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 Hello, it. everybody. Hello. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much for joining oh, us. We're yeah, so excited thank you. to have you. It's going to be a time. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a real good time. Uh, talking with each of you about yourselves and your organization. So for starters, let's go around and uh, introduce yourself with your name and your pronouns, please. Anyone can start. I'll start. <laughs> um, my name's Camion. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm super excited to be a part of the Pride Denton Committee. I'm going to pass it to... Oh, I'm not going to pass it. I want to just take it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, my name is Anadelia Solcera, and you can call me Anadelia if that suits you. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And who got it next? <laughs> I'll go. Um, my name is Angelica. Um, my pronouns are they, them, or she, her. Either is fine. Um, and I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having us. Yay. Hi, my name is George Ferry. I use uh, he, him, his pronouns, and I am very happy to be here today. Yay. Yay. That was wonderful. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect introduction. We love to see it. All right. <laughs> Can everybody also go around now and say, where are you from? I guess I should have included that in the, the beginning part. But yes, <laughs> where are y'all from? I was born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas. Nice. Lucky town. North side. There you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was born in California, raised near Houston, Texas. And yeah, now I live in Denton. Um, I was born and raised in Wichita Falls, Texas. Nice. Uh, but I consider Denton my home. Same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I was born and raised in Dallas, um, so D-Town, Big D, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, we moved to Garland uh, right before I started high school, um, but yeah, I agree with Cammy and I consider Denton my home. Yeah, yeah, I would like to say, I would like to think the same, that's for sure. Well, hell yeah, well that's great. For everybody, uh, for the most part, Texas Queens, which is always great to see. But also really great to see that we all now like to call Denton home. It is good mm -hmm. to have you all as our neighbors, that's for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Can everybody go around and kind of talk about how you identify creatively? We all know you as activists and members of Pride Denton, obviously, which is why we're here today. And you each do something that's really creative and fun. And for those of you who are watching now, you may, ha may or may not have listened to our previous catalog, but Angelica and Camion also have previous episodes with us on the one-on-one -on -one style. So go check those episodes out after today and uh, go into those really fun deep dives. But yeah, so if you all could go over how you identify creatively, that would be awesome. I'll start. I, uh, I have been an artist forever. Uh, I studied dance at the University of North Texas dance performance. Um, and have performed all over the country um, as a dancer, an actor, and a singer um, outside of activist work and owning a business. Yeah, definitely artist first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, that's amazing. Um, I'll go next. Uh, so these days I identify as a poet, um, but I actually was um, an actor and a techie uh, in the theater world from the time I was able to talk until all through high school. <laughs> um, I think I kind of made myself sick of it a little bit, but I was president yeah. of our theater troupe and all that stuff. Um, and I also danced because it's kind of necessary when you're in a musical. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I'm a poet these days. That's amazing. Okay, Mian, what about you? 
I, uh, today, I think I would identify as a healer. Um, mostly like in a peer to peer way or in a mentorship way. Like, I feel like that's something that I don't always recognize in myself, but I'm starting to realize that a little bit more lately. Um, and lean into it because it feels good because we all need a little bit of healing. Mm. That. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I'm so glad you said that because that saved my answer. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> I was I was prop mistress in the sixth grade UIL play. No, like, Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Excuse us. Uh, <laughs> we had no idea. Um, <laughs> so I'm a psychologist by training, and so a large part of my work is hearing stories and being the keeper of these stories and um and so in some ways i think because i've been privy to hearing all these stories i think i'm a storyteller um yeah. because it informs my work and and you know i, I guess i haven't mm. even looked into the word healer before um but i think that's a big part of my identity i just don't like the word psychologist anymore yeah yeah. yeah, I love that that's mm. the word that you chose um, for creative is healer. I don't think I've heard that before, but I love that. So yeah. Um, so how did everybody make their way to Denton? Obviously, we just mentioned we all call it home, but and it took time to get us there. So how did you all make your way to our, our sweet little D? <laughs> sweet little D. <laughs> sweet little D. <laughs> I don't know either. Who got here first? Who did get here first? I came in 2001 uh, mm -hmm. as a freshman to UNT oh, for college and then kind of got sucked in and didn't want to leave. Yeah. Yep. Same. I think Kimmy and I have overlapped and then just never crossed paths away later. I was a freshman in 2000 at UNT, left for graduate school and came back in 2009. That's awesome. Where'd you go to graduate school? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. School. I'm just curious. Oklahoma State. Oh, nice. That's fine. Not too <laughs> but long. I got my degree there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my like whole dad's side of my family went to OSU as well. So my sweet little 80 year old grandma in the stands going, oh, yes, you. <laughs> pokes. There's something. <laughs> Go pokes. Uh, I came to Denton in 05, freshman year UNT for school, um, and left for about two years to live and perform in New York City. I lived in Brooklyn, and then I moved back oh, and have yeah. been here as well um, yeah. ever since then. So out of the 15 years I've lived here, there's a two years where I was back and forth. When I lived in Brooklyn, I also got a, a, a gig that rehearsed out of Dallas. So for six months, oh, wow. I lived in Denton even mm. though I rehearsed in Dallas and <laughs> still had an apartment to pay for in New York. Oh so God. you just, I Airbnb'd, so I Airbnb'd my room to pay oh, my rent smart. there. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I lived in Denton. Denton's definitely my home. This is where I would call home for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. I moved uh, to Denton as a freshman at TWU um, in 2012. So, been here since. I think that makes you the baby, which and is totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the baby, yeah. yes. Uh, that's okay. We love Bring baby. Bringing bright energy and great perspective. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Bring the youthful mm -hmm. spirit fresh yeah. of the, the, ta <laughs> the tail end of millennials. <laughs> it's really intimidating, but I also feel really lucky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I... They I mean, the relevancy that Angelica brings as the only one in their 20s, I think that's very helpful to have on yeah. this team. Yeah, Agreed. and I think, thank God for Angelica. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I also think it's a great indicator of your spirit, Angelica. I mean, like you are able at even such younger ages to get involved with bigger organizations. It's not something that a lot of people in our age group do. So very true. that's off to you, Queen. You do best. You do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. So next question. <laughs> yeah. How did you <laughs> I wish I had a flag? Flag waves. I know. I'm so 
Here, I'll wiggle my bat wings for you. Go, <laughs> go, go. These are for you. I should have painted a rainbow and a bi flag. How about that? <laughs> These are my pride flags. <laughs> Don't need to oh buy God, any. I, love you. I brought my own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, obviously we know all about Pride Denton, but how did you all come as a, I, I mean, meaning we all know that you all come together under Pride Denton, but how did you all come to know each other initially? Was it Pride Denton that brought you together? I don't think Pride didn't brought any of us together. Yeah. Yes. No. Uh-uh. I think the the town of Denton and it's, you know, that six degrees of separation. Like, I feel like Cam and I have had a lot of mutual friends over yeah. the decade plus that we've, two decades we've collectively lived here. And the same with E. Um, and then a diff whole different set of circumstances brought Angelica and I together but different groups, different efforts. I don't remember looking... how we met. I just know, I was like, oh, that's Georgie. That's my homie now. Yeah. <laughs> same, well, dude, same. See, that's funny, because that's how I feel about you too, George. I'm like, I don't know when we like ever became friends. Well, kind of yeah. <laughs> I think for me, the only person that I connected with through Pride Denton was Anadelia. I, I don't think I knew her before. Like, I heard of her, but I... I think it was until I was asked to join that I got to know her so much better. How, how'd you hear about me? <laughs> I heard about you too. I heard about you too. <laughs> I made oh, waves. didn't even know it. You helped it. create a social mm. group here a long time ago. Oh, yeah. That was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. I heard so, about that. Yeah. So what is this? Tell this was back, way back in the day. It was called Say Girl. Because that, that was our greeting. Uh, when somebody, usually because we didn't know the names of the folks we were socializing with or dating. So. Right. <laughs> Stay girl. Um, but actually it was because, uh, Car Carmen Cruz, Papa Cruz is oh, yeah. founder of Outreach Denton mm -hmm. and Pride Denton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so we know each other through the psychology world actually. So mm -hmm. another queer Latinx psychologist. Future guest. Absolutely. And I, and I come yeah. to Denton, there's another one. So, yeah. uh, oh, man. so <laughs> that's the realest. That's so that's how we linked up. And uh, Cruz is such a community builder and likes to bring right. people in. Um, and I think that was my link then to Camion. And then the other uh, member of Pride In is uh, Kathleen Hobson. Mm -hmm. And they are the director of the Pride Lines at UNT, which is where I work. Mm -hmm. And I was doing all the queer and trans therapy stuff. And they were up there and so we partnered a lot and so some of it was because of the professional world mm -hmm. um is that that got started and then last year bringing in it was a little strategic for me to want to reach out to george and helica for a project i had in mind so wanted to make that official and court them i'm gonna court i think yeah. i know <laughs> camion longest though i had oh. no idea Camion was like this badass, like <laughs> activist queen. Uh, Cause I was in a bad relationship and I got kicked out of my house. <sighs> and I moved in somewhere kind of haphazardly and Camion is really good friends with my old roommate. So, uh, cause they did yeah. fun stuff together. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, oh. And I think Angelica and I met at a outreach Denton social mm -hmm. to be completely honest, which is something mm -hmm. I started when I was in charge of outreach Denton, mm -hmm. which is where I met Cruz. Um, a great meeting place. So yeah, it's kind of full circle and I've known George for years, but I'm so happy and grateful to get to know him in a much deeper way than I did before, which was very social. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Out of Mabel's. Yeah. yeah. Into the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Into when the I, streets. Yeah. I, was, I was a bartender at Mabel's many, many, yeah. many, many years ago. Yeah. Before, before half of the people on this chat could even drink legally. 
Correct. 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 It was correct. a long time ago. I feel that's that. So funny. I'm back where when it was still at. Um, I mean, oh, Mabel's. No, I was going to say Golden Boy, but that's crap. Oh, never Mabel. mind. <laughs> yes. I know. For real. We just last week when we recorded with the producers of Glitter, Bo- Glitter Bomb with Lilith yeah. and Milo and Ranch, we, um, spent a lot of time talking about Mabel's and all of our collective memories that span a <laughs> very long time. Oh in that my God. For the yeah, things we can't nice. remember. The things we definitely well, cannot that. remember. <laughs> things we try to forget. Yeah. I wish we could forget. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, um, that's yeah. Well, I like, yeah. yeah, I, I, like the I went to the old Mabel's before it burned down. Ah, yes. That yeah. Yeah. Yes. That? That double bathroom for the... Dub- where was the old Mabel's? It was right like by, across the street from where. Like right by the right by the new one. <laughs> yeah, real, real I did not know this. Across the street. Wait, in okay, the like bet. We're gonna, behind that gas station or something. Like the kickboxing place or like where yeah, you go for your DWI like classes or whatever it is. I'd <laughs> <laughs> be the that only was, one that, that knows the, that one. <laughs> oh lord. I caught it. Well, I know that space, so <laughs> um, <Good> I, <laughs> I thought it was down the street, so that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet and powerful Mabel. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I feel like I talk about my DWI all the time. I'm like, get in a fucking lift. Let's have a mm-hmm. small PSA. Yeah. Get in a goddamn lift. Uber if you have to. Get yeah, a ride. Text- <laughs> Call a friend. I will come. Call get a friend. Friend. Call me. Yeah. I'll get you. Call me too. We'll, we'll I will get up. We will all yeah. get up. Don't be like me. I'm I'm, I'll just say I will come and get you if I hear my phone ringing. If yep. I don't, I'm go. so sorry. I will yeah. pull out my phone. I will call you a lift from my phone and go back to bed if I got That's it. better. How about right. Yeah, right. You're having to like ordering someone a lift. You're like, all right. I'm, I'm like, okay, that. you're where? Mm-hmm. You're Nate. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I don't Got drive, it. so I would definitely have to call someone else. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, I've done it. I've like, why are you calling me? You know I don't drive. Calling <laughs> <laughs> oh, you to come pick them up and you're like, uh spoiler alert. I don't drive. Ah, <laughs> uh, beautiful. Good. A very important thing to discuss definitely during Pride Month when under different circumstances we're able to yes. party in person. <laughs> People do like to throw down during Pride. That's that is for you can sure. Throw down in your home. <laughs> throw down in from the. And you don't have to go anywhere. Um, that's no so lifts funny. required. Yeah. No lifts required. That's absolutely correct. So, from everybody's story, it kind of sounds like your epicenter is a little bit Dr. Cruz. Yeah. For the well, most part, Papa in Cruz, some yeah. form or fashion, that brought you Papa all together. Cruz, yep. Big Papa yeah. Cruz. That's amazing. Oh, and Dr. Cruz, obviously, as has been mentioned, is both the founder for Outreach Denton and Pride Denton, two very important organizations to um, to our city and to our community. Um, can you all possibly speak a little bit to um, the mission behind Pride Denton and uh, your mission statement, your vision statement, however you want to deliver it, what, what inspired it, maybe, if you can speak to a little bit of that obviously it came from dr cruz so whatever you can share or at least maybe what inspired you to get involved with the organization that might be a better way to put it so yeah if you could speak to all of that that would be excellent can i take that one take i'm i'm thinking about um I'd love for in Adelia to take the mission statement, but I'm thinking about how at least I came to the organization. It's not, I don't know that it's that I came to the organization or the organization found us. Like mm. we, it was an effort for a lot of organizations to throw pride um, in Denton, uh, a lot of LGBT orgs, including um, performance organizations. And so we threw a pride and we liked working together and um, Cruz is such a visionary that she had trademarked that name Pride Denton years before (laughs) Um, just because she liked it. So um, I think it kind of formed out of a need and a want to create a pride that felt like who 
we are, but also um, what Denton is, if that makes any mm, sense. Exactly. Um, how it feels to be in Denton. It's um, definitely very like To love community. living here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's our tagline. At least, at least I've been saying it a lot over the years. We're more than a celebration, we're a community. For sure. And um, it was pretty organic. And it did start with collaborations from other orgs, this queer council, like just getting reps. Um, and then just kind of, just like anything else, you know, you throw opportunities out there, there's just going to be the same people who kind of show up and uh, help out. And I think we just started gravitating and, and just like any, like, I don't know, like a school project. Those are the people who have like the same, <laughs> the same level of vision and then like different right. skills. It really did remind me of like school. Uh, like, oh, okay, well, I could do this. And then Cami, I could do that. You know, I think just it felt organic. But I think Cami was talking about too, of we didn't want to be like other prides. I think it yeah. was pretty clear that a lot of prides, current prides in major cities, center gay, white, cis men yeah um center alcohol center big corporations um and you know that's not our vibe um and so some of it was you know how can we have it be more representative of denton and center different communities every year and just build upon that not that we lose mm -hmm. that group every year we now just build upon and make sure that we're growing every year mm -hmm. so i stick around because i this or is, is more than org to me too. I mean, yeah. it's it's definitely family. These are the folks I'm I'm telling about my bad day, or, um, and I think that makes us different too. These other boards, you know, they rotate and they're they're talking about big money, and and then I think we're talking about silly sexual innuendos and uh, big, <laughs> big big deep mental health issues. Like I think, yeah, um, you know, that's it, and that feels different than other orgs where we have like, okay, we're gonna have this meeting and it's much more organized. Uh, we're not as organized, we just talk about everything. Uh, so <laughs> I, think that, I think that makes it really special. And I think that translates and people know us around town for that. Um, I could speak more, but I, I wanna hear more from Georgia and how they feel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we love all of this. <laughs> I like it very good. They, they um, I'll just give a little backstory. Um, Cruz and Adelia and I and Kathleen were the steering committee members for Pride Denton for a long time until last year. And um, they have brought such life and light into our group. Um, and so I think we're just interested to hear from them like what it feels like to be a part of this um, coming in a little bit later than some of the rest of us. Absolutely. Take it. Um, I was really surprised <laughs> when <laughs> Anna Deli <laughs> messaged me and I was like, we were thinking about this because I had just had kind of a drunken, emotional night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, yeah. I was feeling very embarrassed <laughs> about what happened to me that night. <laughs> oh, no. That's how we oh, became no. friends. It was that's how we that is definitely the night I became friends with Nadelia, and she gifted me like this oh. pen. Hold on, I have it. You have it. It's by <gasps> Selena. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. She gifted that to me that night, and it was, it's like, oh my gosh, and now it's just right here, so I see it every day. I have, I keep it at work with me usually, but I work it from home now. Um, but yeah, I was really embarrassed. I was like, wow, I really showed out in front of all these like leaders of the queer community in Denton, I'm just going to go hide now. And then they're like, nah, we're giving you a spot on the team. <laughs> You're hired. You <laughs> like that vibe. Like, we love we emotional like vulnerability. <laughs> She's one of us, y'all. Oh, <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, so uh, we, I will never forget, we had a meeting, me and George and Alex Sylvester, who she moved now, so she isn't able with to be her. involved with Pride Denton anymore, <laughs> which Very is sad. So sad. Um, so but sad. Uh, we had a meeting in the at West Oak outside, and, and Adelia had a vision for um, a night out on the square, what became a night out on the square. And I just, the energy and the excitement, like, was so great. Um, so that's how I got involved. And Adelia was just like, hey, I need... 
I would like to bring you in on this project. And I was like, okay, dope. I'm here. Put I'm me here. To work. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess, you know, being um, a real loud extrovert queer uh, in Denton for the last 15 years, and you start, you get to know a lot of people in the community. So mm -hmm. I think that this was all kind of building up to something really beautiful. And what I mean by that is like, knowing the folks at um, Glitter Bomb and like Texas Queer Lest, uh Fest, like uh, getting involved in Stonewall Democrats, you know, getting on the Queer Council Facebook, you know, being involved on the back end of that in a very small way. Um, and then seeing Cam, E, Kathleen and Cruz having like their board meetings at the wine bar where they'd be talking about a bunch of queer shit and you're like, what's happening over here? What's going on? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Can I uh, sit down? You know, and then... Uh, <laughs> You know, for the years, and then uh, yeah, having that meeting at West Oak and being invited to the vision that that uh, E wanted to create, um, that became a really amazing event. I mean, it, it came out of E's brain, and we took it and we ran with it and got you know over sixty five local businesses, organizations to be involved and to back Pride Denton and come out in full support of the LGBTQ plus community was, was massive. And that showing That's of huge. love and support yeah. last year was, um, it just reaffirms why I think we all call Denton home. For me, it did. I, I just reinforced that there's still work to be done and that there, there are people open to the work. Um, yeah, for sure. It's just a powerful org. It has taught me so much and given me like a like E already used family, but it really does feel like a very like familial thing. You know, we talk to each other almost every day. We are there for each other. It's very powerful. It's just very powerful. Yeah, and I remember when we went to um, we went to something for Denton Black Film Fest. I think. Miss Major. Miss Major. Well, well, no, when we went, we all went together and we all oh, had our partners yeah. with us and we asked for a photo and someone said, wow, you have a really beautiful family. And I just was like, whoa! Oh, oh, was the poetry oh, night that we do? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, here it is. Number one. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to take a drink every time y'all try. I can't time. wait. Yeah. Um, I think we did. We were like saving seats for each other. It was all everybody and their partners and like, oh, uh, it was so, it was great. We got that great photo. That's so beautiful. Wow. Oh. Cool. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. You know? Yeah, you better ask the next question because I can keep going on and on. <laughs> no, I like, you better move on. You better keep it going. Okay, keep it rolling. here's my next question. Here it comes. Um, to my knowledge, you all are the first pride organization committee in the sense that you, meaning like you are the first organization to provide the experience and space that you do for the city of Denton, correct? There are not any that have happened perhaps in the past to your knowledge? Because I can't think of anything. No like to exclusively throw prides no right. we're the no. first yeah. there's okay. been other and, and it was alluded to earlier like there's of course always been that spirit who, and it should mm -hmm. and i think that stemmed out of marriage equality rallies mm -hmm. um right but i but i think ultimately the first official organization to formalize and yeah. amazing that's crazy well, and I, it hasn't been mentioned yet, so I feel like I just want to throw it out there that one of the main purposes of Pride Denton is to cr raise enough money to create a community center here for the LGBTQ plus folk, as well as other uh, communities um, with mental health resources, with, with you know, um, whether it be job placement helping, trainings, um, us going out into the community and giving trainings to your employees. I mean, there's just a lot of things that want to be offered from a community center here in town, and that's the main goal. Yeah. Has that always been the goal since its inception? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I Incredible. mean, awesome. mental health professionals, social workers were the, an educator. Yeah. Absolutely. Were the first, were the four, you know, psychologist, psychologist, social worker, and then uh, Kathleen being a resource center educator. So, yeah, that was. So, our, why not? Yeah. We Absolutely. Just need that in town. 
I would agree. I think, you know, it's, it's integral that, and you and I, we've talked about this when we first got together talking about this whole event, you know, how important it is to create space for all of our queer community. It's like you guys talked about, you know, in, in, in previous, you know, events and things like most corporate pride or larger prides are very alcohol centric and they're very, um, they center themselves. Yeah, they center themselves around more of like the partying aspect than it does as far as like celebrating what pride means and like the importance of why it exists and who it exists for. So I think it would be a really beautiful thing to see you all establish something like that for for our city and then hope that future cities will have the same, um, will follow suit essentially. Um, yeah, I would love to see this in all kinds of cities and places. Are there other cities you all are aware of maybe that you're looking to as far as like examples who are already doing that kind of work and kind of leading the way on the success on that path? Word. Cool. See. <laughs> Further um, emphasizing the need and frontier. importance for yeah. it. Yeah. You're yeah, really pioneering That's exciting. It. Yeah, that's really incredible. I think it needs pioneering too. I think this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, can you all kind of speak to a little bit about what it's been like having to be a pride organization in 2020 and how the pandemic has changed your goals for this year and um, maybe kind of how this art the the events surrounding George Floyd's death and the ongoing protests. I mean, as we're recording this and as we're speaking now, there are protests happening this very moment. So maybe kind of talk a little bit about what 2020 has, I don't know, done as far as inhibiting plans for Pride 2020 and maybe how it's changed, how you guys plan to attack future goals yeah. and things like that. Does that all make sense? Sorry, sometimes. So, yeah, yeah. so I think that as, uh, as uh, the, even last year when the city mm -hmm. had the, when we did the Pride Proclamation, um, it was right after, I believe, uh, was it Malaysia Booker that mm -hmm. had just, yeah. Yeah. and so it was even last year there we were in mourning and um mm -hmm. i think that our our community in particular is not a stranger to mourning mm -hmm. um but um being resilient through it um so that's kind of where i've been on it is like uh stonewall was a riot against police brutality mm -hmm. um so i i we have talked about being very intentional with our messaging and uplifting certain voices throughout the month. Um, so for me, I feel like it's really important to still celebrate our community um, in the midst of everything that's going on, so. Um, I think I would add that like, much like Angelica said, we have tried to uplift the voices of different communities every year um and that has always meant centering the voices of uh biopic folks as well as um folks with disabilities as well as our trans siblings um so i know there's for us, I know there's been some talk about whether we should have Pride or not, whether it should be canceled. Um, and I think something that gets lost in the messaging and the discussion around that is that there are Black queer people that are often very marginalized and um, targeted and murdered most of the trans deaths that we have in this country are women of color um and i think that not recognizing that community is harmful <laughs> um yeah. and so i think it's important for us it always has been but i think it's important to, for us 
to um, make sure those communities know that we see them um, and that we are here to fight for their their right to autonomy as well. Um, yeah. You may have seen our recent posts, but many of us from the steering committee were at um, a march and rally on June 1st, the first day of Pride, or mm -hmm. maybe it was the night before. Um, it no, it was June 1st. It was June 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. first day of Pride, so of Pride Month. Um, and we were there together, um, even if it took us a while to loop up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. we were we were there, and it was important for all of us to be there, and not to just necessarily go together. Like I think most of us went in a pair, but found each other later. But it was not. This is not something that we can ignore, nor that mm -hmm. we uh, feel like should be ignored. And um, we I left think, our meeting. We left yeah, our meeting. That day. Yeah, we left our meeting, our planning meeting for Pride. Um, Many of us on here are activists and have been trying to work with city council or county commissioners to exact change in this town for years. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's also work that people don't necessarily see, but mm -hmm. that's definitely work that people on the steering committee do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think this 2020 is where our strengths our family all the work we've done in our relationship has space to to shine and contribute i think the folks who are able to cancel pride are because of the ones who rely on the corporate sponsorship the large parades the uh, mm -hmm. you know the the centering of white folks and you know to to me this is again another healing opportunity when we get a chance to be together, like I look forward to this. It's a lot of hard work. But there's mm -hmm. a lot of healing in being able to spend time with these beautiful books. And so whether that means we're, you know, there at the, at the sit-in in the middle of Hickory um, or at a dance party, it, you know, to me, mm -hmm. it, you know, this is where I want to be. Um, and it is very in line with our value system. And it was no question that this is something that we believe in and will support and will incorporate. Um, and we're going to reach out to our community. We're a part of this. So mm -hmm. we can't cancel that. That's true. That's correct. Yeah, I think I just want to uplift the, the three people who have just spoken. You know, it's really important to recognize the intersectionalities that occur, that exist. Um, uplift voices right now, um, you know, remind people that our community is a community and that an event doesn't define the community. You know, that's just a, that's a, that's a gathering place, right? Yeah. Where sure. if, if we're not able to gather together, that's okay. We can still celebrate together. We can still mourn together. We can still fight together. Um, we'll find different ways because that's what family does. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that this year has been very hard for a lot of people and continuing to have like that that solace of i know i can rely on this community yeah. is um definitely a, a flashlight needed in a very dark time yeah well put yeah yeah definitely that was beautiful. Thank you all. Those were those were perfect responses. Yeah. <laughs> I love y'all. You guys are amazing. <laughs> um so next question. And I think this has kind of been touched on a little bit throughout, but I want to really emphasize the importance of um how this organization has changed you all if for the better. Mm -hmm. So if you could all, I mean, I'm sure for the better or for worse, you all have to go through. I know I'm like here. Trials trials and and here's the good. Here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. So Tell us. First? I can go first, go first if y'all yes. want me to go. If y'all are okay, <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> Talk about how it's made you, changed you for the better, made you a better advocate. What is oh, it man. Like for you? I know. Um, Get in there. So, you know, oh. it's, um, Pride Denton has done so much for the community and also whether intentional or unintentional, so much for me personally. <laughs> um, you know, like as a, 
as a white person, as a white cis male, you know, it's really important to understand um, when you're in orgs to, to truly um, respect and uplift what's happening and the work and the, 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 the ask. Um, they've, gosh, man, Cam, E, Cruz, Angelica, and Kathleen um, have given me, um, man, the ability to understand what self-care means and what yeah. it is and the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. I learned that mm -hmm. from, from my Pride Denton family. <laughs> I learned that I was in a career path that I want to shift. And I have, you're hearing it for the first time, uh, yeah. Marie and Bertie. Uh, I start school on Monday. I heard <gasps> Bertie's going back to school too. I heard that, that that's exciting. That is uh, and, in, and in three years, I will have finished my bachelor's and gotten my master's in social work. I'm going to become a social worker. Um, yeah, amazing, congrats. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, also, and I haven't, I don't think I ever told the Pride Denton fam this, but yeah, starting a new career, uh, which is exciting and, and, and very scary, but also right. uplifting the advocacy and taking it to a whole different place mm -hmm. for me is really important. Um, mm -hmm. But it also gave me the strength to run for office again. I'm not making this about me. I'm just simply saying I didn't think I'd run for office a second time. Um, but I feel like what I have learned from my Pride Denton fam and the strength that I see in the community has, has really in, given me the opportunity to see the importance and the need for that work and yeah. that that work needs to be done. So yeah, yeah, I, I owe a lot to Pride Denton. I owe my future to Pride Denton. Yeah. Um, wow. So oh, thank course. you fam for that. We love you. <laughs> Oh, that was amazing. Yeah, that's exciting. exciting. Uh, no one was on that. Yeah. Okay, top that, one of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to top stories. That's not how this goes. No. I'm just saying, that's beautiful and monumental, and I'm so excited for you. Congrats, George. That's amazing. Thanks. I'm not really. Um, <laughs> I, it's not going to top George, but I, I think you. I love you too. Um, I think one of the four nineteen. <laughs> I think one of the things that um, is coming up for me is I'm a Virgo and I'm a little Type A, and it makes it hard for me to trust people. Um, so I end up doing a lot of the work myself. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. And this is like one of the first spaces where it feels like you don't have to do that and actually no one wants you to do that yeah they they aren't gonna let you do that which is the self-care piece <laughs> that we're just talking about <laughs> they're not gonna let you do that um and so planning something as big as pride and as big as last year's pride was with seven days of events and one yeah. of those days having three or four events in it yeah. at yeah. once. Um, we did that. Y'all did, yeah, did, did, did that. did that on a Saturday. There's, fucking a did that. there's a march and a rally. There's, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot. There's a dance party. There's a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, I think like being able to do something that big can feel really daunting, but it doesn't with this group. And even when we think we, I think one of our biggest lessons has to be to dream bigger because mm -hmm. I think we always like vision things out and then are gobsmacked by the response. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, it's really helped me in the rest of my life with trust uh, mm -hmm. with other folks because I trust our process as, however it may be i trust it because um it works for us and i trust them um and i think that shows through so that folks that come to pride our pride events um trust us they trust mm -hmm. our events and um i think also feel like welcome there and i think that's really yeah. important absolutely Two left. Oh, no, Get in there. I can go. I can go. Um, so, <laughs> um, 
we talked about earlier i'm the baby baby <laughs> you're so, baby. i'm baby <laughs> so, <laughs> i have so much to learn from <laughs> every single person on the committee um and or in the family but just the things that are coming to me now is our intentionality, um, patience, and thoughtfulness. So <laughs> um, that, like, just like in my life, I'm not a very patient, patient person. Um, and I can be, you know, I can be a little bit angry sometimes, but um, something that I've learned in, in the year that I've, I've been involved is just like how having patience and really thinking through a decision can benefit in the long run. Um, and just everybody in our group is very honest with each other. Um, and I've never, I've never been in a space like that before where, you know, I mean, where, where I can say like, I feel very tired and overwhelmed and here are the things that are happening in my life right now. And I know that it's not like, I know it's going to be received and I'm going to be validated and affirmed and loved. Yeah. Like, and that is so important when you're working together on something like this. And I think that it really does show in our work, how much we love each other um, and how much time we take to really think through things and really think about, okay, who does this serve? Who are we serving? And how does this decision help them? Yeah. Um, so that is definitely something that I'm, I have picked up and I'm, I'm using in other spaces now. Um, so I, I'm just, I'm really thankful to be here. <laughs> All righty. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you take your lovely time. Uh, no, well, I think, I mean, I want to echo what everybody said, but I think, you know, what I heard on Helica stand out was, and came out and George, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody, don't look. <laughs> don't look at her. <laughs> Pride did taught me that I'm lovable. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this is a relationship with his family, and I choose it every year. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of healing that happens in being able, like you hear, like I'm gonna do a little psychology thing. Like hear all the words that were happening that that came out of my team members' mouths of trust and honesty and healing, and you you help me with my future and you you support me. I remember pulling on Angelica, George, and Alex because we were getting attacked that year. And they were the most vocal members of our community to step up and that built my trust. Like those are the folks who are gonna fight for me. Yeah. And we're pretty vulnerable for for some here. And that kind of support and, and fight was needed. And you know, those folks stepped up and I'm like, God, those are the folks I want. Um and so lovable they taught me that i'm lovable and valued my work and saw me and my leadership and saw my skills like when i do something in other spaces it's just so what i do but when i do something here i i get feedback you crushed it that was awesome that was beautiful that was so mm -hmm. cool oh my gosh, what a great what a great idea yeah. you know just those words like yeah. what a great idea i you know you don't if you recognize what you never had until you get it yeah for sure mm -hmm. that's what i love wow that's beautiful it thank is. you thank each of you for sharing that i mean you're right i you know you guys brought this up or you all brought it up earlier in the uh, when we started recording um but i don't think you all have ever had a chance to really like share the story behind this organization or even really share your own story because you each all spend so much time advocating for others and doing work for other people and making sure that your space and the people around you are taken care of. So I am so glad and thankful that we were able to share that space with you while you got to take that moment and 
shine a light on yourselves and your own individual work and accomplishments because it's so important. Like you all are making history right now. You know, when we are, you know, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, or thus or whatever, people are going to look back on this time frame as you all as being pioneers, as you all as being leaders to the forefront of creating actual change in our community. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. It's yeah. really, really And y'all's love for each other is definitely yeah. felt through your events and through how you make your community feel. So mm -hmm. thank you for that because it is visceral for sure. Yeah, it's definitely palpable. That's correct. <laughs> Ugh, you're all beautiful. Amazing. Okay. You have to also recognize we really miss each other too. I was yeah. gonna say a lot of yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, like we also really miss so each other. When and how I told that we, story, we, we, but it's not enough. I know this is not enough. This is enough. So when you told that story about how someone said like, "Oh, what a like." beautiful family i was like that has to hit y'all hard right now because y'all haven't really been able to like be together yeah, a even long time seeing each sure. other at the protest i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah yeah this whole, this whole environment yeah it's just really changed the way that we're able to i don't know we're really learning how to appreciate one another. That's for sure. Took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to switch gears just a little bit, if we can, mm -hmm. honor and respecting the wonderful energy that we just had. Let's maybe talk about, um, can you all share with us some ways that our community can better support you all? How can we how can we as a podcast, how can we as a Denton community better support Pride Denton in your efforts so that you have more time for self-care and more time to be together as a family and not just a hardworking organization? Yeah, how can we what, support? What can we do? What can people do? Well, you can definitely donate. Yeah! Um, <laughs> our our yes, website Cam. has a place where you can donate and you if you want to really deepen your investment with our organization, you can um, kind of do like what's a Patreon, just uh, become a monthly oh, donor. Cool. Oh, wow. Um, and that really helps sustain the work that we're able to do mm -hmm. because this is very much like a grassroots effort for pride. Like that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, and we rely heavily on partnerships, but we mentioned that our dream is to um, have a community center here mm -hmm. uh, for our, our folks. And so um, that's going to take some capital. Yeah. Um, so I really think it would be great um, if folks would consider um, throwing some coins our way if they have it. Very okay. true. Very true. Cool, cool. How else? Anything else? Obviously, money is right up there with air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 but if there's, you know, I, I mean, so if I am, you know, just like an individual, whether it is, is, is it promotion? Are there yeah. committees that you all are trying to establish that people can participate on? Anything of that nature? Well, I think something that came to mind is just uplifting our value system mm -hmm. because you know, that usually guides a lot of our decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm the one usually saying, no, that's, a, that's in line with our values. Um, and, and if more orgs uh, or businesses were doing that, um, you know, being able to be aware of who they're centering and who feels welcomed at their events, is it accessible? Um, and are you acknowledging history uh, that got you there? Um, and being able to have these partnerships every year. I mean, we, we did these events, we're saying that, but honestly, those were partnerships with other orgs and yeah. businesses the entire time. And a lot of it was having conversations all the time. Like, so here's what a, you know, all gender restroom means, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, or here's what it means to be accessible. Um, and those conversations could go easier if everyone was practicing them because that is an hour or 10 hours that we're having those conversations or trying to get someone on board with our vision. Mm -hmm. But I just imagine like this world where everyone's just trying to do that work yeah, and how much labor that lessens for, for uh, folks who already hold yeah. those identities perhaps. So 
for sure. That's something, and that's just more in the broader sense, like can we all just kind of do that work? Um, right. No, that's great. Yeah, that's great advice. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about your favorite memory from Pride Denton. Happy, sad, tear-filled, tearless. We want it all. It's hard to have faith. I mean, every year after Pride, we get together um, for a day of rest with Aww. each other. Um, That's cute. So I think those are some of probably our favorite memories. But um, we, I don't know. I just feel like we always, when we get together, we always do like your top three or your top five mm -hmm. moments of the pride that we've just thrown. And uh -huh. so I think it's hard to say that there's one mm -hmm. for yeah. me, but I will say um, my favorite event that we've had every year has been the sidewalk chalking um yeah. and the first year we invited local artists um queer artists to sidewalk chalk and it was just like amazing the yeah, things that beautiful. we had and it was the first time that we were going to two venues because one venue was not enough um mm -hmm. but there's not like a space we felt like could hold everyone mm -hmm. so we had people at two different venues um, and each venue had something unique there. Mm. Um, and the sidewalk chalking was just our way to invite the community to help us create a pride path so people know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was just really beautiful to be out early in the morning because we were trying to beat the heat and see people with their families and their kids like chalking in the middle of the, the road and um, the talent that we have in this community when we just ask for it mm -hmm. um, to yeah, be no shared kidding. is mm -hmm. like an overwhelming joy and a gift. So that's like my favorite event. But I think like my biggest aha, wow, like let this sink in moment mm -hmm. was at last year's night out on the square i mean i can remember just standing still for a moment and seeing how many people were there and how many booths we had on the square and how many businesses had um decorated their establishment like a pride float and that's never happened i've never seen that happen ever and i've lived in denton since 2001 so it just was like um a moment where I felt really grateful to be a part of this team to bring something like that to fruition made by the people who live here and put on by other local um, orgs and businesses who we all love to go have fun in. So I think yeah. those are mine. That's perfect. Awesome. Who would like to go next? I can go. <laughs> um, so uh, a few memories come to mind for me. Um, so the first, the first one that comes to mind for me um, is from before I got asked to serve on the committee um, or to be part of the family. Um, my mom and Mateo met at Pride. Like Aww. he. My mom came to Denton, like Mateo and I had hung out the day before, he had done something really silly. And then the next day was Pride. And my mom came and she, we were hanging out at Oak Street and Mateo met up with us and I, my mom was like, who's that? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I remember oh that really vividly, <laughs> that my mom and Mateo met at Pride Denton in like 2017. Wow. Because awesome. um, and then uh, so that's really special to me. <laughs> I don't think I've told y'all that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I knew that. That's yeah. <laughs> um, he was there taking photos for the dead night. So <laughs> of naturally, naturally, yeah. so. Um. Yeah. The 
then the other memories that come up, uh, I just uh, was the, when we, at the dance party at Harvest House, we were, we got wild and it was just Yo. really nice to let loose yeah. like that. And totally. like, we didn't have to worry about too much during that event. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Aside, I mean, we we had Purpose our service. own, yeah. So that was really nice, and like getting to watch us just get be like just have a party, and that yeah. was really fun. And like everybody shaking their butt and sweating their butts <laughs> off, yeah. and just the beautiful go go dancers, <laughs> Birdie, you are one of them. That was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And I hope you made so a lot of money. I, <laughs> I did. Thank y'all. I really yeah. did. It yeah. was great. I had that's honestly probably one of my favorite memories too. Absolutely. Yeah. Not likes. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was the collab with Spiderweb Salon. Uh, yeah. And yes. the and for me, more so it was the zine making mm -hmm. workshop that we did. And just like for me, like that was like both like because Spiderweb Salon is a family for me too. Mm -hmm. um, so so to like see, yeah, for everybody to merge and everybody to know each other and mm -hmm. like also love each other was super meaningful for me. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad we're continuing that partnership this year. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. E, do you want me to go next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're back. You know, it's, it's funny because that brings to mind the cool things that Anadelia created for that spiderweb collab. Am I correct, E? You had a zine, you had an entry in the zine. I had entries and I spoke. Yeah, right. And you yeah. spoke at yeah. the at the actual event. Yeah. So when we were talking about like artists, I think of you as an artist. And, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. I'm like oh, and I think back oh. to that event specifically well, in mind. Thank you, Spiderweb. Because yeah. Courtney Marie is the only one who probably first called me an artist. I love me some Courtney Marie. I've had yeah. the yeah. privilege of performing with her in a couple projects that she and I have done together. Oh, that's so um, my my favorite. Gosh, that's so hard. You know, I think back to that that year, and I believe so. Like Camion said, we have that the Monday after the Pride Week. We this this the seven of us because Alex was in town. Uh, she was still a part of Pride Denton. Um, mm -hmm. We had a an a self care day as a team, and we think oh. back and we're like, wow, we had like, if you include the outreach, uh, kickoff prom. Oh, it was like 10 God. events in nine days or 10, like 10 or 11 events wow. in like nine days. Yes. So for us, it's like, wow, seven people mastermind for the most part, all of these events. Wow. And right. we did it. And that's why I think the dance party for me is just such a pivotal moment mm -hmm. in that week because we got to let loose because we knew yes. the next day was yes. an event that we didn't have to run. Yes. You know, it was, it was kind of our, okay, we've made it. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I've never seen Harvest House that packed. I haven't either. Never. 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 I mean, to Not see once. the community come out party. in wow. droves. Thank you, with, Ursa. with DJ Ursa yeah. Minor. DJ like, Ursa Minor. Yeah. So good. Can we do Ursa it? Minor. Yeah, we do not deserve you. We literally no. do not. She's Woo! amazing. I'm I just guess. so glad she loves us too. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'm like, cannot... well, really? <laughs> Every time I get around her, I'm like, oh, you're amazing. I have to go over here. Okay. Yeah. Here's five dollars. Please play this song. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. She's amazing. But yeah, I, I think it's just, it's just, again, for me, I always harken back to just seeing the community love taking part in what yes. is happening. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think this is not to be meant to be like a little sad point, but I remember when we were setting up for a night out on the square and there were some um, unhappy folk that we were there. Yeah. And people were kind of getting in our faces and uh, street preachers were kind of shouting things at us. And we were trying to set up for this event and we were all feeling very uncomfortable and we were all really upset. And it was really hard because we were, we had just gotten through the majority of the week with a lot of events and we had a lot more to go and we were doing our best to keep face, to keep moving right. forward, to keep positive. And it was nice to see a bit of community kind of walk over there create you know this dancing space this like basically like a little mini wall around these people who are just mm -hmm. shouting really hateful things so that we could continue to you know we blasted Lizzo on the square and we just mm -hmm. kept moving and yeah. kept setting up 
you know, even through those moments, it's just yeah. seeing community come out and support you mm -hmm. and to, to lift you up and to push you forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's very meaningful. Sorry. No, that's okay. I was going to say, I forgot. I also really loved chalking because that mm -hmm. happened. We did, we, you know, the night out on the square happened on Friday mm -hmm. and that was one really traumatic with the street preachers. And then mm -hmm. I was also really anxious because I was speaking. Yeah. Um, so the chalking felt really therapeutic <laughs> for me. Yeah, like, I bet. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like, it was early in the morning. It's a very different vibe. All these little mm -hmm. kids are there. Like, yeah. it was really nice. Yeah. I loved the little Kirby's on the sidewalk truck this last <laughs> oh, time. Oh, cute. Yeah. It was super cute. <laughs> cute. I did those, yeah. Mm -hmm. so sweet. But yeah, it just the community coming out and being so supportive, I think, is the best part. Just seeing yeah. the happy faces, the celebration, the, the pure joy on people's faces mm -hmm. at Harvest mm -hmm. House. I, uh, it's just heartwarming. Mm -hmm. It yeah. makes it worth it for sure. People enjoying your hard work, thriving off the hard work that you yeah. put forth as a group. It's so really, rewarding. yeah, it was really a beautiful sight. I was going to say, I don't think I'll ever forget <laughs> that harvest house party. <laughs> Cause I remember, you know, going yeah. into as somebody who also has spent time on nonprofit boards and working with like events, you, it's really scary to go into a new space and try and create a space on behalf of your hard work. And you're like, you don't know who's going to show up and you don't know who's going to show up and you don't know how the night will go. And so I think it was a really beautiful event and it was iconic. Absolutely. Yeah, no kidding. Flew everybody out of the water and just, I mean, not just that event, but everything you all have pulled off with a mere team of seven is, I mean, a mighty team indeed, but that's mm -hmm. an immense feat that you all have, have sure. accomplished. It, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have a lot of these events without artists, I will say. Yeah. So artists and performers. So I think, you know, while we can orchestrate and all that, but to have the poets and the dancers and like, even the film that we showed and teamed up with the Black Film Festival, like mm -hmm. art and media and performance is, is big part of our community and, and you know we wouldn't have anything to really help us celebrate without those um, images and images and the music so I've, I've been really appreciative of that that whole vibe um, I do think back to night out on the square for a lot of both negative and positive reasons um, I was very stressed I think I, I went into that idea with a very big big ambition uh, I knew I couldn't do it alone, but I really, really wanted to have it happen regardless if it, if it tore me up. And the street preachers were awful. Um, there was a lot of, it felt violent. It was yeah. scary. Uh, I was more than upset. I was, I was really worried because um, they were getting physical. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. so um, I think part of it, what helped me actually is looking over to Cruz who had happened to join later and so missed a lot of the more dramatic parts but to see yeah she you know, was giving a keynote or something that day. yeah oh my gosh of she course doing work herself always always <laughs> always doing but the work to see her who, she, who she's you know they are if angelica's a baby then it's it's got to be fair we call her the eldest so you know yeah. <laughs> and knowing that she's been in this town for over 20 years uh and to see her delight at seeing the, everybody show up, the businesses having yeah. rainbows, businesses, all of John Williams' businesses, and mm -hmm. um, on the square, like the center is like painted with rainbows and beautiful. community, and people are showing up. Mm -hmm. So to see, to understand, and know that somebody may have lived in this town where that would have been not possible, and then to right. see this, I just felt, oh my God, show up. Uh, like, I wanted to do that for her. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And it you know reminded she's us that everyone's perspective wasn't what our perspective yes. was, which yeah. is what's important about the hashtags and the photos that we saw mm -hmm. later. Like, um, that helped me. Yeah. yeah. That helped us a lot because last year, someone might have mentioned this already, um, but there was a trans woman in Dallas that was murdered. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you can see the flag, or I should say the banner behind 
um, in Adelia that says protect black trans women. And that's something that was created out of a response because of what happened last year. And so I can remember seeing photos of trans women taking photos in front of that banner and just like being so glad that they were at our pride um, mm -hmm. and that they wow. got to see a banner that said something about them mm -hmm. um, yeah. to feel seen for a moment. And like, those are the moments we don't get to see because we're with a headset and like right, right. over here and like what's mm -hmm. over there and like what's happening. Um, mm. But so I think it's, it's been really important and that's why it feels so much like uh, why we create it for community uh, with mm -hmm. community in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Oh, I see Angelica. I, see. I know. I'm like, I just want to take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why makeup? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worn makeup in forever. I, feel. I know. Me neither. Right, I was yeah, getting okay. I was like, what am I doing? Because my friend and I did it the photo shoot last week. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah. Those are beautiful, also. You were so cute. Yes, you were. Precious. Wow, yeah. So there you have it. Favorite memories, impactful memories, again, mm -hmm. historical moments for our community. Absolutely. One right after the other. Um, with all of that in mind, um, I know I said we were going to talk about the what the femme question, but I think I just want to go ahead and skip right into um, promoting what you plan to do for this year first. And then we go to the femme question, because why not? Yes? Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Let's keep it on track for that. Yeah. So with all of those beautiful memories, with everything going on, what does 2020 look like for Pride Week, Pride Month, for Pride Denny? Well, I guess, do you want to take the, the Friday night on Helica event? Um, well, I want to talk about the boxes first. Let's talk about cool. the boxes. I was like, yeah, what's the boxes? boxes. <laughs> Yo, I was like, boxes. Boxes. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> All right. So first we can, say, we can say what we have to offer because I know a big part is being able to be visible. So right. um, with the COVID still, you know, a, a risk, we are not, we felt it would be irresponsible to, to call folks. And actually with that energy, I'd much rather people be going down to the protests and making their voices heard. If we're gonna gather, um, you know, that's where we are too. Um, so there's gonna be two online events which you'll hear about and then the ways that we're raising money this year because a lot of nonprofits have taken a hit financially because the fundraising options are, are down. Um, we are selling t-shirts through Panetcher, available on our website, pridedenton.org. The D and the E are overlapped in Pride Denton, so it's one word. Mm -hmm. um, instead of two words. So we're going to be selling boxes for $15. And as of now, on June 20th, we, our team, and some volunteers are going to be caravanning, delivering them. So think parade. Oh, and instead wow. of decorate your cars. Get decorate ready. your cars. Get parade to the house, just a little tiny. Mm -hmm. We'll Come caravan on. a couple oh, of us. Put your box out there. You deserve and it's make just some, so make some, us. Make, yeah. make some yeah. noise. Maybe do a little, I'll maybe do a little shop on your driveway, driveway if you let me. Um, so the box is, again, $15. It's going to have our commemorative glass that we would typically have at Oak Street. They're, the contents is all going to be gentle nods to our past prides and the businesses and orgs that have, have helped us along the way. So um, this is what it'll look like. Yes, yes now. please. If you've got one, yes. Yes, okay. So this is what's going to be showing up along with oh, wow. this, it's a bigger flag. It's not that dinky it's flag. It's a big flag. Oh, yeah. 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 This is going to be sitting on your doorstep waiting for you. Oh. So the main thing is inside is the commemorative glass. The theme this year is queer in it together. Um, I love we're all, that. Yeah. And so we'll have other things in there. Um, so <laughs> bubbles that will remind you of the dance dance party because I was all about those bubbles. Right. Those beautiful lights. Yes. We'll have yeah. a couple chalk sticks in there for you to do your own art and nod to the chalk. Um, some donated sunglasses from May Hill Hospital, one of our major donors, because uh, we of course believe in mental health. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Ah. So, <laughs> so, so, so those, yeah. And then we don't want to give it all away because each box each box is going to be a little bit different. 
but oh. for the most part, it's going to have contents to help you celebrate. Amazing. The t-shirts too, there's some gentle old nods. So George is wearing one as well. George, can you model for me one more time? Model. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, so yes, they have pride yes, yes. little D. <laughs> yes, yes little D. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. I love it. We have two old shirts. We have a spiderweb salon shirt with a rainbow spider oh, on it. Oh, I've never seen that before. Yeah, we have yeah. a shirt that says queer in it together. Super cute, I love bubbly. That. And then the brand new uh, Denton Daddy. Uh, so, yes. yeah, it's in your face. How did you not oh, go, yeah, to go to the website? Go to the website. Denton Daddy. I'm about to buy some <laughs> Sorry, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna get one for myself and my partner. I'm really like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So these are all the things we would have been donning and, and wearing and, and drinking from and all that. Yeah. And yeah. you know, we want we, we still want folks to have those things and, and be thinking of, we're thinking of them. And then the caravan is just to show that we're still here and to be able to see maybe some of our friends along the way and at a social distance. Right, of course. So that's the boxes. Go to the website. It's the main page. Fill out a delivery form and give me money. $15. Give uh, money. You, could only, you could also gift a box so you can pay for it, but the form you fill out, you could be to a friend um, and you can get a couple of boxes for order. So am I missing anything, George? No, I think you crushed it. Okay. No. So, Perfect explanation. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. And thank you to your model for the beautiful presentation. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we need a QVC network, but it's queer stuff. <laughs> yes. I'm here for queer that. VC. I would do that, queer VC. Yes. Amazing. Okay, so we've got the pride box. We've got the pride 20th. caravan mm -hmm. that comes with the pride box. That's on the yeah. 20th. Uh -huh. we've got oh, yeah. Yes, and Helica, what do we have going on on Friday, correct? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. Yes. Great. So we are delivering... The caravan will deliver your pride box to you on Saturday, June 20th, so that you have all of your pride gear ready to go in time for the events that we're holding, the virtual events that we're holding on Friday and Saturday, which I can't remember the days right now. 26, 27. There you go. The 26th and 27th. So yes. the 26th. Um, is going to be um, a collaboration with Pride with uh, Spiderweb Salon. Um, <laughs> so we're doing another um, art and poetry and music showcase. Um, we're still doing the booking for that, so I don't have any information on the featured artists right now. Make it a surprise. Um, That's great. Yeah. So Spiderweb Salon is also going to be putting out a call for zine submissions. Um, so is, um, if you have capacity and feel like you want to be creative, you can submit your zine um, that will possibly be included also in the pride boxes. Wow. Oh, cool. Um, so that is one way that we're collaborating with Spiderweb and then also this showcase. Um, and Courtney Marie is today working on building the web page on Spiderweb mm -hmm. Salon's website. So you can submit your zine. Um, but also so that if any queer or trans people in the community want to take up, uh, want to submit to participate in the showcase, um, we'll be selecting a few people um, uh, kind of last minute just so that we can, uh, people who want to participate can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Courtney Marie is building that website right now. And uh, the that showcase is Friday night, and I think it's going to be really great. We're going to have a Zoom call, but we're work we're going to be working on streaming it on YouTube, um, so that then it'll be just a link. You can go to the Spiderweb Salon website and watch it from the web page, the same wow. web. Page. Oh, cool! Yeah, the zine, or you submitted um, to be part of the showcase. Um, that way, it's. Uh, anybody it doesn't matter what social media you have you can participate and you can watch from home um so i'm really excited about that i i i can't wait to release the lineup it's gonna be great yay hell yeah and there are awesome instructions coming out for anyone who wants to be a part of making a little one pager zine isn't spiderweb salon putting out instructions on how to do that yes, how to make one that, how to yes. submit it 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a one-stop shop. You go to that web page and it'll have all of the instructions for if you want to participate, this is how you participate. So I'm really excited for our siblings to all get to contribute yeah, in some yeah. way that they have capacity to, even if that means just watching. And sometimes that can be really healing. Um, yep. So I'm, I know personally that I heal through art. So <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm excited uh, for that. I think it's going to be really beautiful. Absolutely. Like it. Yeah. I'm excited. So that's just Friday night. Yeah. What's yeah, Saturday night? Saturday. George yeah. about with uh, ooh, Outreach Denton. Ooh, 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 so ooh. Saturday, June 27th, after an amazing open mic music poetry fest with zines included in your cute pride box, um, <laughs> we will be including some other fun things that can help you decorate your space to get ready for a dance night. So ooh. we are partnering with DJ Ursa Minor once again and her amazing glorious talents through um, the app called Twitch, which we'll release more details about that once that's all kind of hammered out. Um, but it will be Saturday night. Uh, our theme, as uh, E has said, is queer in it together. So, uh, you know, we're just gonna dress up and have a good time. We're also possibly partnering with someone, not to be announced soon, um, to do cool mocktail kits that you can get and then you can create your own custom cocktail for the event. You, of course, will keep the, the booze at your house if you choose to put it in. You can, if not, you have a cute little mocktail to include with your dance experience for yeah. Saturday the 27th. That is a collaboration for Outreach Denton and Pride Denton and yes. DJ Ursa Minor. Wow. Yeah. That's exciting. That's, That's so excited. amazing. Yeah, Outreach Denton and Spiderweb have been big collabs this year. We're really excited. Yes. Heck yeah. 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 I do a little quick shout out to John Williams, who have been an amazing angel for us this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Every, year. Have been really every, year. every year. Every year. <laughs> every year. Every All year. the time. All the time. From yes. providing he venues. got the Ally in Action Award. Ally in Action Award, and he does it every year. And he this do. year was no different. And I, you know, we could have expected him not to, but, you know, he showed up for us and is donating um, the commemorative glasses. Wow. Yeah, the pint glasses that are coming in the boxes, all John. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it, you so John. much. Yes, so amazing. Claps for John Williams, his very yes, tiny he, little baby yes. ones right now. Bam, 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 bam. He's incredible. Talk about true allyship in action. That's absolutely sure. right. He was a true rep of that, I would say, absolutely say. Wow, those sound like amazing events. That's going to be yes. so fun. <laughs> Yeah. Man, congratulations on um, being able to find ways to adapt and innovate your yeah. plans to COVID and everything that's going on and socially distancing. And it speaks again to your hard work and your creativity. And we love to see it. And I, I can't wait. I'm going to buy a box on payday. <laughs> get your box. Going, going, get your box. Get your get your box. Get your box. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Some of those boxes might have some What the Fan podcast merch. Oh, oh, hey. uh, get in those boxes, everybody. Get in those boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Great. Thank you all for sharing those with us. I do think it's time that we move on to the big question. What do you all think? Ooh, big question. Yeah. Heard? Did we miss any questions? Anything no. else you wanted to cover? Nope. We asked okay. about the memories and stuff. So yeah, let's go. We did it. All right, everyone. Let's go. We have come to the part in our episode where we always like to ask our guests, what does femme mean to you? Do you identify as such? If so, explain. If not, talk a little bit about what that term might mean to you or even just about femininity who wants to go first you got two veterans i don't know i feel like in helicon camion maybe you should go first since you're already so well versed in this I mean, question i think fem is how you want it to be how it feels on you that that's how i feel fem is yeah. and i shared last time that my new favorite way to identify as fem is being a blouse Yes. Yes. I'm a blouse. Yes. I'm a blouse for sure. Bla how many blouses? I'm a blouse. Go. <laughs> I'm a blouse. So, <laughs> I'm I look like a blouse. Looking but back. I love a thin blouse. <laughs> 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 Uh 
<laughs> that's you know maybe next year's t-shirts is i'm just saying the oh. definition blouse and then the definition like definition yeah that's i'm top <laughs> i love it we gotta so spread the word <laughs> we do we need to let people know what the vernacular is yeah. we gotta share it <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I have started liking that term more. Um, I guess I've, I'm still kind of understanding it for myself. Um, and so, yeah, whatever, how that ever feels on you. Um, and it feels good. So, I, and also part of that energy, I think, too, um, is actually when I, when I get things done. I know that's kind of weird to say, but it's like, in charge at the helm like doing things and it it actually feels like more feminine energy to me and i think yeah. folks have attributed that to, to masculine energy and um but i think it's you know i'm aware of a lot of the emotional labor fans hold and i know that when i'm doing that that's that's part of it i'm learning my boundaries with it so i think part of it is it is evolving relationship with that identity for me and what yeah. feels good and what feels not so good about it um when i'm holding it so i'm learning about it i like it i do identify yeah. and i started feeling that way um and i will say i don't know if there's a later question but uh i think chola magnolia is one of the people who taught me that that's why um, i'm here i knew that was so because growing up <laughs> George, cholas you know so for those who don't know what a chola is that's a that's a gangster woman Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, in Mexican identity too, you're high femme here, like makeup, and then hair, and then hoops, and then down here, button flannel, total lezzy. Yeah. So you know you're, you know, you got the khakis and the Nike uh, shoes, and yeah, it's just that. Like that's my vibe right there. So, and those were the yeah. first like, those are people I like looked up to for better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cholas, I guess, were my femme yeah. icons. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love you, <laughs> Anadelia, so much. <laughs> I I love that she couldn't go a podcast without dropping <laughs> Chola Magnolia's name. <laughs> we have to. Are you waiting? Hey, it, it's been an hour. At least. <laughs> <laughs> you did wait a while. You did wait a while. That's you a beautiful know. shout out. We love Let you, Chola Magnolia. You we love Chola. One of my first we guests ever Chola. on this yeah. show. And probably one of the most <laughs> profound conversations mm -hmm. I think I've ever had in yeah. my life. Yeah. That and person, so. Incredible. Uh, so, of course, mm. mention her. I'm like, I know she's integral to your, yes. yourself. <laughs> e, like, let, her, right. let it be known. Yes. Amazing. I guess what I'll add to that, because again, I, I, I am kind of on that same page as E with the way she feels about femme. I think for me, there's just... There's so much power in, in, in the, the, the term femme, what femme is for me. There's, it's such a powerful force mm -hmm. um, that, you know, like you said, you know, there's a lot of emotional labor to, to recognize that's held in femme and for femme folk. And, and I think that for me, it's that energy. There's just this powerful energy about femme as someone who, who uh, exhibits femme a lot of femme qualities and, and, and assigns femme to themselves. Um, I feel like there's just a lot of, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I have never, I have actually never sat down and really broken down this for myself, which is an yeah. interesting conversation that I plan on journaling I mean, in the journal E gave me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you know, always but for you. them, it's just always just very powerful. There's just this very powerful energy when when I when I am around femme folk, when I when I talk when we talk about femme people who work in industries where you know high femme, I just everything about it is very um, very impactful and powerful. That's okay. all I can add right now in this moment. And then echoing what E said, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Mm, Tell the magnolia though. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Woo. Love it. So um. Oh, yeah. So right now, femme feels very comfortable for me as someone who is experiencing a bit of a crisis with gender identity um, and all the, all the complications that come with the word woman mm. and the expectations of woman. Um, 
So I definitely identify as femme. Um, and for me, that means just picking who I want to be. Like femme obviously means certain things to certain people, but it also is more easily molded, I think, to uh, pick aspects of yourself, I guess if that makes any sense. It's really hard for me to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, okay, yeah. You're doing great. Uh, but yeah, I, de I definitely identify as femme. I think that I, I would agree with George that I, I feel power in that identity. Um, and I feel a lot of confidence in that identity. Um, saying like, yeah, I'm femme. I do these certain things and I feel this certain way. And for me, that means femme. Um, and I think that because it's so easily molded to be what we want to be, that it's easier to accept, for me to accept myself as femme mm -hmm. um, versus whatever other labels are, could be for what I am. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah. Right that's now. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. That was perfect. Yeah, it was. Thank you. I think, Camion, you got to go. Yes, you started. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Everybody got everyone. to share their things. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all so much for sharing. Did uh, it. Yay. <laughs> well, with that, where can everybody find you online? How can we get connected to Pride Denton? You're welcome to share your personal social if you'd like. If not, I totally understand. But how can we get in touch with Pride Denton online, at least? That's a great question. What's our handle, y'all? Uh, at, Pride at Pride Denton, but it could also be Pride Denton Pride TX Denton sometime. TX. Mm, so okay. PrideDenton.org for sure is the website. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see our social links at the bottom of every page, of course. Amazing. Um, and we are on Facebook and on Instagram mm -hmm. as of now. And remind so. us again, how can you donate? How can we give you our dollar? Right. Website. So the website has a couple of opportunities. It has a donate button where you can do the monthly sponsorship uh, or just one lump sum. You can be a sponsor for the boxes. So help us uh, offset the costs or donate goods for the contents of the box. Uh, or you can buy a t-shirt from Pride Actor or buy the box itself for $15. So mm -hmm. those are ways to contribute on the website. Amazing. We also have next week, we're going to be putting out a call for volunteers to possibly help with either putting boxes together or caravanning. So look out for that on our Facebook. Um, so that'll be an opportunity to get involved and spread some <laughs> queer box love. Queer a van. If I get a van. Queer a van. I can get a four-wheeler. Can <laughs> I use a four-wheeler? <laughs> Not allowed. I will use whatever it takes. I will pull a trailer. What do we got to do? <laughs> someone, look up, someone look up Texas rules about being in the bed of a truck. That's all I want to know. Oh, I think if you're over 18, it's fine. Sweet. We'll find out. Don't quote me on that. I'll edit that okay, part cool. out. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, okay, well, I think that about does it for us here, folks. We're going to move into the live Q&A session. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Yay. There you go. 